discuss 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 the merits that is the 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 usefulness or the advantage the merits and the demerits of the following Are you okay? Discuss the merit and demerit of the following. A. Neofunctionalism. So if you take neofunctionalism to answer that, if you take neofunctionalism as a theory, you, you tell us what it is, and then you tell us what its usefulness is, its merit, and what its demerits are. You understand it? Good. B. Liberal, liberal governmentalism. Liberal governmentalism. C. Institutionalism. Institutionalism. And finally, constitutionalization, the process of constitutionalization, from the word constitution, constitutionalization. So, briefly, briefly, this is how people like Hans and Lindbergh have theorized about European integration. What about Africa? How is African integration theorized? Who has said what? And so on. So I want us to move to Africa. You were at the lecture yesterday. Yes. So some of these things were mentioned. Now, to understand the processes of integration in Africa, the debates, the discourses, we have to take 1945 as our starting point. 1945 is quite important. And 1945 was the end of the World War II, when the war ended. Now, if we take 1945, at our starting point, the first thing that comes into mind is the fifth Pan African Conference. You remember? Mm -hmm. The fifth Pan African Conference in London and Manchester. And This fifth Pan-African Conference, there were previous Pan-African Conferences, but they were in the diaspora, they were in America. But this one, the fifth Pan-African Conference in, in, in London and, and, and Manchester, was one that many Africans attended. Kwame Nkrumah was there, Azikiwe was there, uh, Ras Makonin was there, uh, George Padmore, they were all around. And here, in the final resolution that they made, they agreed that one, all African countries had the right to use all means, including violence, to win independence from the colonial master. Of course, this was based on the Charter of the United Nations. You know, because after the war, when the war broke out, the League of Nations collapsed. After the world, First World War, there was the League of Nations, which was to prevent war. So when the Second World War broke out in 1939, the League died. At the end of the war, a new world body came, the United Nations. Now, in the United Nations resolutions 
or in the in the protocol of the United Nations, they stated that peoples of all countries had the right to self-determination. They had the right to be independent. And Kwame Nkrumah and the rest at the Fifth Pan African Congress agreed to this. The second thing they agreed on was that because capitalism, because imperialism was responsible for Africa's underdevelopment, Africans should not choose the capitalist path. They should become socialist. That's quite important. So for the first time in 1945, uh, uh, Pan African Congress, socialism was recommended for African countries. That is one. Two, African countries were asked to use all means, including violence, for their freedom. And after the conference, all these countries, all these people were to go back and struggle for their independence. And so we see how John Padmore, John Padmore in particular, because sometimes we say Kwame Nkrumah said this, Kwame Nkrumah said that. Actually, the person who was speaking was George Padmore. George Padmore, let me say a little something about him because he's so influential in, 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 in African politics of 1945. His, his friend name was Malcolm. Not Malcolm X. No, Malcolm X is uh, Aladdin Shabbat. He was called Malcolm Ness, and he put out Hesse. That was his real name. But he says in his own book that when he became a communist, he has to change his name because he feared the American security. So he, he chose the name George Palmer. And George Palmer was from Trinidad. And, and you know what he means? George Palmer. Uh, Okay, so George, George, Pardo, P A D M O R E, George He was he was a theoretician, very powerful theoretician, and when he left the U.S., uh, he was a great one of the greatest Pan Africanists. If you choose Marcus Garvey and Du Bois, this man was theoretically the most powerful. In terms of organization, maybe Marcus Garvey, but theoretically it was George. And he was so, when he left America, he went to Moscow. 